I can never say <laughs> I I have it. I can never say it. <laughs> Still, I trip up on the words. Um, but I, I always, back then, even for me, it would have been, I was born in 81, and elementary school was fine up to a point, and then I had this issue where I just, I couldn't express myself fully. Um, mm. I had no pro. I had a, I had a college reading level. I was tested on all these things. It was great. I just had problem speaking and I had a speech impediment. So what do they do? They put me in special education mm -hmm. and I know what kind of blow that did to me. So, um, I can only imagine, well, you can tell me mm -hmm. how did that do for your psyche <laughs> at uh, coming across the pond like that <laughs> well I, I in, in truth i think because of how um i kind of how our move went so eight and a half years old we move over and we i i'm we we moved to a little tiny well we moved to a small city north of toronto for two years mm. and it was only ever going to be temporary accommodation until kind of the sale of a house back home went through and and uh and they they, they decided what they wanted to do so then they moved from a small city to the middle of nowhere like literally like shit Creek kind of view, right? Yeah. <laughs> and actually, where I grew up is only a few hours away from where they filmed Schitt's, Schitt's Creek. So, that kind of small town Ontario thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everybody was related to each other. I wasn't. Um, it was a little tiny village of 800 people. So, really very small. Oh, wow. And, um, and and really that like the, the local school board had no idea what they were dealing with they didn't have any supports um and and so putting me into this reading group even though it was like it wasn't like it was integrated it wasn't special ed where it was completely segregated from the rest of the of the of the of the school um it was still one of those like i'm not sure what i'm doing here like and 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 in truth like again the school board hadn't even heard of what of my diagnosis so it was like i went through uh, you know speech therapy where it was hands-on where it was integrated where it was you know it was just a normal part it was a language unit um and then to come over here and and then not even know and so i remember like i would get into because 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 of a way that kind of how I learned English, I, like I knew English, but I couldn't communicate it, right? And mm -hmm. so a lot of the words that I was using were bigger words because of speech therapy. Like the, the uh, and growing up in Wales too, my, my, um, my speech pathologist, um, she had a Welsh accent and she was fluent in Welsh. So for, for her, it was very important for, that I learn bigger words to really test out the muscles, right? So mm. my language was much more advanced than, than my, my level. Mm. And, uh, and that confused the teachers. They had no idea what to do with this kid. And so they would often be correcting me. Oh, no, that's too big of a word. Don't be using that word. Um, I remember I, I had an argument with one of the teachers um, because I, and I'm not sure wh why this d was happening, but I, um, I wasn't capitalizing anything. So I was, uh, uh, handwriting, I wasn't capitalizing anything. Um, or I wasn't capitalizing my name, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it has, like, I understand it now, it was because of how I was perceiving the letters. Um, but they, they tried to make me feel like, or they might try to make, suggest that I was, I was, uh, I was dumb because of that. And I'm like, <sighs> You know, like really horrific. And I, to be growing up in the same town as most of my teachers, years later, I pulled them aside and I stripped them down for it. And mm. uh, of course, they were you know, egotistical and whatnot. But um, yeah, yeah, it was just not a great situation. It was yeah. not a great situation. I, that's, it's harrowing when you hear it, too, because it's like yeah. these are the people that are in charge of molding the minds of the future generation. <laughs> This is the thing, right? Yeah, and I I know for me, my my turning point was, for, for me personally, was in fourth grade when mm -hmm. I was in advanced classes, but what happened was I had been answering, you know, everyone's answering questions that the teacher was calling out, and I answered a, a complex uh, logic question that she was asking. It was like a fun, like, oh, we're going to do these fun logic puzzles, and... Mm -hmm. She rattled it out, and I really I rose my hand. I was like, "Hey, yeah, this is the answer." 
And she goes, well, how did you get that answer? And my brain just went, I don't know. I don't know. And like, I couldn't articulate how I right. put A, B, C together to get, you know, E. And I was like, I don't know. And she goes, what are you, stupid? Uh, I was like, yeah. oh, okay. I guess I am. And I literally hated school after that point. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> the narrative. You accepted that narrative that you were yep. stupid, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that. Absolutely. It, it took uh, a long time, and it wasn't until probably about a couple of years ago that I realized that I was holding on to that that story of like, yeah, I am right. stupid. And it's like, oh, good. God. Yeah. It is a very typical struggle. I see it a lot with my clients, right? Those of us who are neurodivergent, we, we, we grow up in a situation where there is a system that is trying to force you into a, a, a particular peg. And if you don't, if you don't belong in that peg, you can't think in that way, then you're made to just fall through the cracks or you're just past 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 right yep. and unfortunately in the smaller towns uh, and smaller communities um it, it it becomes really it becomes really dangerous because yeah. the local the local teachers many of them i know there's a shift going on um so i don't want to make a generalization but when we were growing up right many of the teachers had been in that community for years they were so yeah. connected and, and 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 their education often most of them were from the 70s and in the 80s there was a big a, a big shift in in education um in north america so like i remember i, I remember a lot of the the really intelligent uh, kids I went to school with who ended up just because they they weren't getting support for undiagnosed ADHD they weren't getting support for being stimulated right um, mm -hmm. they ended up resorting to drugs and alcohol and whatnot because they just didn't like they just couldn't they ju they weren't being stimulated they weren't being yeah. um, you know challenged 